Hi, my name is Linda Eads and I'm a member of the RECM investment team. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a few recent allocations that we've made in our global and global equity funds to aluminium producers. Now, aluminium is a very interesting metal. In fact, in the 1800s, it was considered a precious metal because it was very expensive to produce. And so much so that it was considered at equivalent status as gold and platinum. But with technological breakthroughs, the metal has become far less costly to produce. And with its positive qualities of uh, being very corrosive resistant, um, being lightweight, uh, being a very strong metal, and of course also being a very good conductor of electricity, aluminium has found its way into many industrial usages. And in particular, in both the construction and transport industries. And I think if you think about, for instance, an aircraft fuselage, it is the perfect example of how aluminium has been exploited to good effect. So aluminium has become a widely used commodity and it's added immense value to society. However, it's not added immense value to investors in aluminium producers over time. And the charts here shows you what the aluminium index has done relative to the total world index. And you can see that the trend is a downward slope suggesting that it's underperformed quite substantially over time. So it might surprise you to learn that we've actually made recent investments in this industry. Now, our investments into the aluminum industry are in Norsk Hydro, which is effectively a, uh, the biggest aluminum producer globally, uh, which is principally based in Norway, but has actually got activities in more than 50 countries, as well as Illumina, which is the biggest producer of alumina which uh, goes into the process of making aluminium and is made from a mineral called bauxite. So our two investments in these companies are specific to the properties of those businesses themselves, as well as related to the aluminium cycle as well. Now, with regards to the aluminium cycle, what you found is that aluminium prices have been significantly under pressure. And this is as a result of aluminium going into excessive oversupply as a result of very high aluminium prices in the mid 2000s. And what that resulted in is excess supply relative to demand, as well as demand falling off a cliff with the globe going into recession. So that has placed a lot of downward pressure on the aluminium price over time. So much so that 40% of the aluminium industry are not earning an economic return at today's current prices. Now, we believe that the underlying demand dynamics for aluminium are strong. Increasingly, it is being substituted for steel in many applications, including both in transport, construction, and industries such as the beverage can industry. And then it's been replacing copper with regards to electrical applications. So the demand dynamics for this metal are very solid, which means that Aluminium producers have to be able to generate an economic return over time to be incentivized to continue to produce this metal. So we think that the aluminium price, as it has done from its lows, will continue to rise to the extent that most of the aluminium producers will be able to make at least an economic return. Now, the interesting thing is that is exactly what's happened. Uh, the aluminium price, as I mentioned, has been rising steadily upwards. And despite the fact that the two companies that we're invested in, which are also some of the lowest cost producers in the industry, have actually seen their share prices rise in anticipation of a normalization of their profitability. In other words, the market is actually preempting the fact that these businesses will return to somewhat more normal conditions. And I think that's very interesting because it's not a dissimilar thesis to our thesis on the platinum industry where again, platinum prices are very depressed relative to where they need to be for platinum producers to continue to supply the globe with the platinum it needs. However, platinum stocks have not reacted at all in anticipation of that capital cycle normalizing. But hopefully I've demonstrated to you today that we have a rational, sensible, and disciplined process with regards to valuing resource businesses and our conviction remains intact with regards to our platinum thesis, whereas fortunately for us, with regards to aluminium stocks, these businesses have repriced to such an extent that in actual fact, both those stocks are trading in line with fair value, and you should see us actually reducing our positions in the near future. Thank you.